Um, so in the course of the next several thousand, several hundred pages, it's actually not that long. It's a fairly short book. Anyway, the, this is, uh, she's discovered she's inherited a cemetery and she's um, trying to run it because there's nobody else to run it. Um, and she's already had someone tag her front door at the apartment building with big red horse letters on it, which she had to then paint over. So this is um, later on. There is also, she's been out in cemetery learning the ropes and trying to do open and closing of graves and trying to get the grass cut. And um, it, over the course of the first part of the book, there was a little guy across at the way beyond the end of the cemetery in a field nearby and he she thought maybe he was just a nearby farmer or something but she's seen him a couple of times so anyway this is uh later on in the book um this is she's gone out to the cemetery it was dinner time and there was not a soul out she parked at the office and noticing the mound of earth on the new grave she reminded herself that she had to order the marker did she have the right information for it the typewriter was electric at least, and she discovered she could backspace and erase her errors. What a wonderful thing. There wasn't any carbon paper, so she'd have to find a place to copy it in the morning. Her spelling had never been great, and now trying to hunt and peck for the letters while trying to remember how to spell the word was challenging. There was a dictionary in the drawer. She took it out to double-check herself. It was nearly dusk by the time she finished. The cemetery had no outdoor, outside lighting except for a porch light over the door to the office. So now the windows that, that had provided such a great view were now mirrors reflecting her at work. The dark glass didn't show age or wrinkles. Nice, she told herself as she stretched when she finally got up out of the chair. Not bad for an old broad. She sat down again and pulled out a blank piece of paper and pens since she was writing letters. Dear John, this return address is where you can reach me if you want to write. I hope you're surviving. John's in prison, by the way. I'm permanently here until further notice. My mother died and I'm dealing with her things and her property. It looks like maybe it's doable here. I miss hanging out with you. Sorry I didn't visit. I was trying to make a go of it with very little money and just couldn't spare the car fare. Write if you want and tell me how it is. It must be real tough. You're a lot tougher than you let on, so I figure you'll make your way. I'm real sorry for you. John, I'm pregnant, and it's yours. I've decided to keep it if I can. I've not even been to a doctor yet, so I'm being real dumb. But I thought because I'm so old that maybe it would just miscarriage or something. But it's growing now, and I'm sick in the mornings, so I'm going to the doctor pretty soon. I don't expect anything from you. The situation here looks good, so I should have a living. I'll tell you more as I know it. If you don't want to write me, I'll understand. It wasn't going to last forever down there. I know that now. I've never done anything to make a living in sit on Easy Street. This may be a last chance, and I just have to take it. I may be too old to see, see it through. I want it to be a girl. I'd love it. I'd like to love it the way I wished I had been loved. The town here is a little bit frightening. I've created quite a stir showing up and looking like I look. Everybody acts like I'm a kind of a ghost that has come back from the dead. And it's all about the boobs and the bod. I suppose after years of strutting, it's only right that's all they see. Maybe that's all I see. God, I'd like to have a drink with you and have you make me see the silliness of it all. I hope you're all right, love. She started to erase the word love when a car door slammed outside. She jumped. An engine gunned and the tires skidded out the gravel drive. What the hell was that? She hadn't heard anyone drive up. She went to the closet to see if there's anything she used to protect herself with. There was an old rake and a shotgun. She grabbed it. She didn't know how to even see if it was loaded. She turned the lights off inside and out and stood in the dark by the door. There weren't any other sounds. She went right outside, but it was pitch black. The moon wasn't up yet. She turned the porch back light back on. No sign of the car. She went down and looked around the corner, back at the entrance to the cemetery. There were taillights far away. Was What was that about? She turned towards the truck. On the side was the big red whore. God damn them. 
There was, a hose, there was a hose at the side of the office. She propped the shotgun by the front steps and turned on the water. The paint was still wet and a lot of it ran off under the spray of the water. She found a rag and dish soap in the supply closet and came back to scrub it. She broke two nails cleaning it off, but it looked like she got it all. She was wet and soapy as the truck. Shit. She sucked her broken nail and she checked the other side of the truck. And she'd been so careful in the typewriter too. There wasn't anything written anywhere else. It wasn't over there, it was over here, somebody said behind her. She turned. It was an old man in rags and dirtiest sin, sitting on the front step of the office with a shotgun in, it, in his hands. She, she, he seemed to be looking at it rather than her. Hello, she said. It wasn't much to looky-see, he said to himself. That's my gun, Dady said to him. He cocked his head as if listening for something. He placed the gun gently on the stoop and stood up. It was an effort to get to his feet and he looked very old and rickety. He wouldn't look at her. Here is over there, he said, shambled across the drive and walked on towards the back of the cemetery. Thank God he put the gun down. New Orleans is filled with crazy homeless people. This guy seemed just like all of those people that she was used to. You see who tagged my truck? She yelled after him. He turned, but not all the way. He was talking to a mound of earth on the new grave. Just a looky-see, little Dee Dee. Just a looky-see. No harms, no hits, no errors. He disappeared into the doctor's. She went to the shotgun and managed to get it open. There were two shells inside, but they were probably real old. How long had it been sitting in the closet? She took him out with the idea of going to buy a new one. She would need to know what to get. She took him back inside, put him, put the gun back where she'd found it. Slipping the shells into her purse, she gathered up her papers. She'd figure out how to mail John's letters later. There was a flashlight in the desk. It needed new batteries, but it worked. She brought it with her when she locked up. She started the engine and then turned it off. The old man had called her little Dee Dee. She got out and started across the cemetery on foot, following the direction that he had gone in. This is real stupid, she told herself. She found him about 50, miles beyond, 50 yards behind the back boundary of the grounds. There was a grove of trees and bushes that were never mowed and weeds were high. He was sitting on the ground next to a shopping cart full of crap, cardboard and plastic bags filled with God knew what. Knew what. She had a radio, he had a radio blanket on the ground, another one wrapped around his shoulders. The flashlight was barely working. He looked down, shielding his eyes, like a dog waiting to be run over. He smelled like roofing tar. She put on the light on his face, and he looked away and hid under his hand. Just a looky-see, for God's sakes. She didn't know what to say. She f was afraid to be right or wrong. She was afraid to say it. Daddy? Oh no, no God here, no over here, no God there, oh no. She watched him, hid under the blanket. She moved the light from his face. She needed to get away and think this over. The light would die and she'd be stumbling her way out of here. I'll come back, she said, and turned to get away. She wasn't sure at all. If this was her father, who was buried in the ground with a marker? She was afraid he might follow her but there was no sign of him as he reached, she reached the truck. She needed to go home. What if the asshole went back to the apartment to tag her there again? So I'll leave you there. <laughs> uh, plot thickens. Um, it's a good read. It's, it's a, oh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. And it's all.